Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the Karf Strega build. This is build video number three in the series. We're diving back into the wings to kick this off. All right guys, so we're starting off with the right wing just because this is the first one we grabbed. And we pulled the aileron cover off for the first time here and it has the servo mount, which is awesome. Now you can see the way this works is obviously your servo mounts in there. Our arm's gonna be pointing downwards and our actual linkage and everything comes through the fuselage as a pre-cut hole there to our uh, ball joint mount. Now this is all standard carf stuff. So we've got a double-ended ball joint that fits in there. Uh, the Flap servo mounting is right inside the fuselage. You can see it there. So that's gonna be a bit of a stretch to deal with. And that sits about here on the wing. So about a foot inside the wing. And again, we've got our pre-done hole from Carf and our mounting points. So we're gonna get our, our hardware out, our servos out, our receiver central box set up. We're gonna get all that laid out and then we can start working on the aileron. All right, so we're just getting everything lined up here on the wing on the aileron surface. Now we are using rubbers on our servos because this is a gas plane because we've got lots of vibration. And the other thing the, the rubbers do is they bring everything out in line to the servo hole. So when we put our servo arm on here, uh, the carf setup is using a clevis on the servo side, the double ball joint on this side. So that clevis needs to be in line with the servo arm. All right, so we've got our servo wall set up here. Uh, we've used the rubbers, we've got our arm installed. Now, I'm not sure what arm we're gonna use yet. This is kind of a temporary thing. And the reason for that is we don't know what kind of resolution we're getting, what kind of servo arm length we need. So more of a temporary thing. So servo has been centered, directions moving the correct way. We need to create our servo extension coming to just above the wing tube. All right, so we've got our servo installed. We've got our servo lead connected to our extension, which is coming to the root of the wing. And we used, as per normal, a little bit of shrink tubing to hold that entire connector together. So now we get to figure out our linkage setup. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get the linkage set up on the servo side. And when we put it through here, it's gonna be easier to have the linkage assembled on the servo, slide it through here, and then get the rest of it assembled. Now, we are gonna be putting a piece of carbon over top of this linkage. So we're gonna to have to put it together, disassemble it. So it's gonna be a bit of a chore, but all par for the course to get this set up properly. All right, guys, so just playing around with the linkage here and uh, we've got a piece of wood in the way underneath here. So you can see there that our linkage won't go at the correct angle. So what we need to do is we need to get that dealt with so we can take this uh, linkage and flatten it out more. So we need to sand down some of the wood that is sitting right underneath this area. So I took a drill bit ultimately is the easiest way to do it and drilled through it as flat as possible. And that created our channel for our servo arm to fit through. So now we've got good access for our linkage to pass through the wing skin. All right, so the, uh, the ailerons are a bit of a challenge on this aircraft. And part of the reason why is everything's coming through this hole. So you don't really have great access to work on the servo. So we've installed the servo. We've installed the servo arm. We put a little bit of CA holding the clevis onto the servo arm. So when this is in the servo arm, put a drop of CA on there. Reason is that clevis needs to sit horizontal because you can't feed the arm and linkage through the hole with it, the stock size. So what we have to do is thread it in from the back side to trailing edge of the wing or the surface side of the wing. And you'll see once I pull this out here what I'm talking about. So you're almost a little bit blind when you're putting this linkage in. There we go. So what I did was I created, I was able to lift this up enough with this screwed in, mark it with a Sharpie, and then I took a nut and installed the nut on the actual linkage. So that gave us a stopping point with the servo in place like this. I was then able to adjust the ball joint position. And now we've got our 
carbon rod length here. So this is exactly the length we need for our carbon rod. I'm going to pull our servo out just to double check and make sure that we were horizontal or which we weren't really actually. So we should make that a little bit shorter. Actually, we probably should double check it. So now that this ser the servo arm is uh, perpendicular to the servo, we'll put this back together and double check it. All right, so we've got our linkages done up here. Now this is both of the linkages. We just made the assumption that the other wing is gonna be identical. That may bite us in the butt, it may be awesome. So what we've done here is we've cut our carbon, we've used Hisol 9462 long here, uh, covered the rod, installed the carbon, screwed the ball joint on, and now we've got two linkages that are extremely solid. So we can get one of these guys installed on the servo. All right, so we've got this all figured out. What I had to do was open up the opening here more because the carbon rod takes up so much space up and down. So this is uh, definitely a requirement to open up that section. So I took the file, used the file to number one, get rid of more of the skin. Number two, get rid of more of the wood that was on the underside of the opening. And we're good now. I've put this all together. I've checked our movement. We're getting more than enough movement. So we've, uh, it looks like we're all set. When I put the linkage inside the clevis for the final time, I put a single drop of uh, blue Loctite on there. So when this is screwed all the way down, it's being held in place by number one, the nut. We've got this tightened down to hold it in place, but also the blue Loctite's gonna keep everything nice and tight and prevent any slop between the clevis and the threads. So now we can connect this here and then we can get our servo door or cover plate screwed down. All right, so just trying to sort out this flap geometry here. That is landing flaps, which is 45 degrees. We've measured that with our angle finder. So there's a good shot there of what the flap linkage looks like. Obviously we've got some adjustment there. I'm just trying to think about how we can make that all work out. When you're at full flaps, everything is in line. I mean, that's our ideal, right? Is like normal, we want our servo arm and everything to be in line. So that means our servo arm is gonna have to be pointed towards the back of the airframe, I think. Hmm. So to give you kind of a reference point here, um, if we are looking at the servo exactly how we were just looking inside that hole, this is kind of the angle that our servo arm is gonna need to be at when we are at full flaps. So flaps off or takeoff flaps is gonna be something like this and zero flaps is going to be something like that. So this servo arm won't work and it won't work because we don't have enough room back there to run a bolt through. So we're gonna have to go with a carbon horn. So I'm gonna grab one of those and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so here is the carbon horn. So because this one has it more offset towards the outside, this allows us to thread a bolt through the backside coming out and then put a nut holding everything on. Uh, this is kind of an important thing because when you go to mount your uh, linkage that connects the surface to the servo, this kind of needs to be a, a fairly simple uh, layout here. So what we'll do now is we will keep all of this in mind. Our servo linkage here or surface linkage is coming down at this angle. So what that means is when we get our servo installed, we need at full flaps to be something like that, as far as an angle goes. So I'm gonna get both flap servos plugged in to the, uh, the central box, and we're gonna get this uh, position here kind of set. All right, so we've got both flaps set up, moving the same direction, same position, same everything. So that is full flaps there. Take we've got takeoff mode, half flaps, half mode and normal. So the other thing that we've got here is obviously more adjustment that direction, but we've kind of maxed this position out a little bit and uh, that's fine. So one of the important things here is Carf designs the kit to use clevises 
in this situation. Problem with clevises is we are looking for that straight linkage to full flaps, which is gonna look something like that. So obviously a clevis doesn't work. Now if we did uh, improper geometry and had our servo arm something like this, then we could use the clevis on one side, but if we can get away using the straight geometry at full flaps, it's gonna make everything easier on our servo and less stress on the servo. So we're gonna use a ball joint on this side and obviously the standard double ball on the surface side. So we're working on the flap servos here and uh, I'll just show you this. This is one of those rare occasions that I will actually leave the servo lead or the wire lead coming off the servo at full length. So we've got these wires here, which are gonna be fastened in place. They're gonna go under the wing tube, out the wing, and we wanna be able to take the servo out, work on it, service it. Uh, the connector is right back there. We've got that uh, shrink tube together but this allows us to be able to have the servo out at this point and be able to deal with it. So what we'll do now is all that extra lead will just get tucked in the uh, center wing section and just float around in there. But uh, now it's time to screw that servo into the wall or location where it's supposed to go into, so. All right, so we have our flap servo wall installed and I've done up the linkage here. Now this linkage is gonna be adjusted, carbon rod added, all that fancy stuff, but the way we've done this is we've got the double carf uh, ball joint on this end. We've got the standard uh, Dubro ball joint on that end. And what we'll do is we're gonna get this installed on the servo in there. And we're gonna do all of our adjustments from this side, from the side that's sticking out. It's gonna be a lot easier. And then once we have that adjusted to the correct length, then we will uh, simply um, figure out our carbon tube length and get that installed as well. So it's going to be a bit of a process, lots of on and offs, but uh, this is the time to make sure everything is 100% correct. All right, guys, I'll give you a shot of how this is all working right now. So we've got our flap centered. We have, nothing's been 100% uh, fastened here, but so I will move the flap right now to the 100% mark and the rest I'll have to do by hand. That's the other nice thing about this wing is the root has enough space in there to be able to reach your arm right in. So we don't really need to have power on the servo at this point either because mechanically that's what we're looking for to get our 45 degrees. So we've got that set up. We've got this arm put through with a bolt. We've got our angle finder set to 45 degrees and you can see there we are a little bit shy, right? So that means we need to shorten this linkage uh, probably a little bit. Now those ball joints are turned on all the way on both ends. So we actually need to take it off this side and cut the rod in order to get more uh, a shorter linkage length. All right, so we are all set up here with our flaps. So can see here, boom, we're exactly 45 degrees. And then our whole linkage setup right there, that is what we are looking at. So our carbon rod's been installed, our linkage is all perfect, our geometry's good. Now when the flap's on like this, it's putting all that force down the linkage itself. And then our flap off position or normal position is there. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Now I opted to not use the CARF mounting bolts. I have these special ones with a really big head on them. They're a hex head. Uh, the CARF ones are a Phillips head. So these are way easier to install and they've got nice big washers on the head. You can see the carbon rod there. So everything is nice and glued and stiff and strong. Uh, we do need to put a little bit of black tape around the wires going through the carbon right there, but we have installed black tape and some CA just along the uh, base there of the wing tube uh, support. And these will run over like this underneath that wing tube. 
All right, so we've got both wings uh, complete as far as all the surfaces and wiring goes. Next thing we have to do is get our connectors installed. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use ash lock connectors. We're going to use uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we're gonna use a 12 pin connector on these guys, but we're gonna reverse them. So uh, one's gonna be one side, the other wing is gonna be the other side, so they can't be messed up when you plug them in. So, and because we're using this uh, door servo line here, this is gonna be the length of our connector. So everything's been predetermined by this one servo length, uh, which keeps things nice and clean and neat. All right, guys, wings are complete. The final step here was doing our connectors. So you can see what I'm talking about here. We've got one style of ash lock connector. Everything's marked out and routed the same as the other wing. So this is the one side and this is the other side. So these connectors are uh, mixed up. So there's no way that once we have the wires coming out of the fuselage that you can connect these incorrectly. So wings are now complete. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start working on the back end and then working our way forward. So with the back end, we've got to get our wiring in place for the elevators. So we want to switch those connectors out and probably put ash lock connectors on there, the locking style ones. And then from there, we need to start working on our tail wheel and rudder setup. So that is the, uh, the plan back here. We're going to get the connectors done first for the elevators. I've got these marked out here. All right, so just sorting out the tail section here. Uh, this is our tail tray and obviously the, uh, the tire or, or rear wheel sits out like this. Our steering servo goes through the bottom as well. So the whole system ends up looking like this. This part here faces the, uh, the top side of the plane and our steering system is a cable pull-pull setup is how it's going to be uh, set up. This whole assembly bolts in this area right here. So you get that whole assembly together and then you have to slide it all the way back here, slip it into place and then bolt that assembly down. So the steering servo is sitting right here. Uh, the whole gear assembly is sitting right there. The, uh, the manual is very old for this plane. So I think the way it's set up now is you use a piece of piano wire and that's what closes the gear doors. That's the, uh, the plan, I think. Uh, originally the old manual had two air cylinders back here, but uh, we are not doing it that method. We're going to try and use piano wire. So definitely a bit of a process with the back end of this thing. Not having any manuals is, uh, is a challenge. So anyways, I'm gonna to start to work on this stuff and get it set up. So we're gonna get our servo bolted in place, our gear bolted in place. Now there's this doubler piece here as well. And uh, I'm assuming it's gonna go in that location just to give us some more strength to, uh, to be able to screw everything in and bolt the, uh, the gear itself in place. At least that's what my, uh, my brain's thinking anyways. So I think we're gonna get the gear set up here. We're gonna get everything Loctited, get the wheel installed, and we'll kind of go from there. All right, so first step we need to do in the rear tail section here is we're gonna take all of our bolts and nuts and screws and everything off the, uh, the rear gear and make sure we blue Loctite everything. We're adding flat spots to the main collar. So we're gonna do that on everything for this tail wheel, including like this area right there, our other clamps, we wanna make sure we do that so this doesn't move. So I press this with all the builds that I do. It's very, very important to check every bolt and nut on your aircrafts. Uh, the manufacturers do not install Loctite. Uh, there has been, I can count the number of planes on one hand that have had Loctite installed on the gear parts. So actually I can count one aircraft that has ever had everything done. So definitely a good thing to do. Uh, if you don't, don't do it, then everything will come loose over time and it really makes for uh, everything to be an absolute maintenance hog. So we're doing our last little bits on the gear here and then we'll be getting the gear assembled. All right, so the last piece we need to flat spot is our little uh, axle that goes through there. So what I'll do, this position doesn't really matter. We just need to know exactly where to flat spot it. So I'll just add a little black mark there 
and that gives us our position to add a flat spot. All right, next thing we're doing is we are getting our servo installed on the plate to control the rudder or tail steering. And then one thing I like to do with this setup is I will take a little bit of thin CA and drop it on the back side of the screws to make sure everything gets locked in place. All right, so that's what we look like once everything's installed on the tray. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our pull-pull system. Very straightforward. The kit comes with a section of wire here, four crimps, and we'll just get this set up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug the servo into the central box. So the servo is nice and powered up and solid and centered. And then we'll get our, our nose or our tail wheel centered as well. Cables are nicely installed here, nice and tensioned. Servo is nice and quiet and the steering works great. All right guys, so we got our cables all hooked up here on, this, on the tail wheel section. Uh, everything's working good, um, but when we go to retract this now, obviously we got the retract set up. You can see the cables are fairly disorganized. They're all kind of flopping all over the place and that uh, provides the opportunity to possibly get tangled up. So I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with this to solve this problem. There's a pretty simple solution. I've talked about it on build videos before, but uh, let me just get everything set up and I'll show you. All right, so we've taken our ends off here and we've put a piece of tie gone over top so it holds the clevis closed. And then we've also installed when the ends were off, uh, two pieces of shrink tubing. So all we do in this case is we just take a heavy zip tie. Uh, it doesn't need to be too crazy, but you wanna get that zip tie installed like this. And it's gonna span both sides. And basically what's gonna happen when this retracts is that zip tie is gonna push everything open. There we go. So now we'll shrink this. Now we'll see what happens. There we go. So what this does is basically just keeps everything organized, right? So um, the cables are a lot less likely to catch on anything. You can see it spreads everything open nicely. And then when we extend the gear, it should just go together nicely. All right, so we've got the gear just kind of placed in uh, its home there. Uh, in order to get it in, we needed to have it retracted. And now <clears throat> I'm going to extend it. I'm just gonna be very careful because I haven't tried this yet. And I'm going to assume that it uh, has enough room. And it does not. It's not interesting. <sighs> so as per normal, this is one of those scenarios that uh, really kind of suck because not having a manual is quite frustrating. So I'm gonna play around with this a bit and figure this out. All right guys, well, I tell you, this tail wheel has been an absolute pain in the butt, but Fortunately, Inez has showed up here and she's finally uh, helped me out a little bit. Let me explain some of this stuff to you. This has been a whole bunch of pains and this would be one of those scenarios that if you had a manual, this would be one of those things to cover in the manual. I'm sitting here getting this thing in and out of the aircraft over and over again, finally realized that, you know what? I need to move this electron gear in more, at least about a finger width would be good. So I'm looking at this thinking, well, maybe I'll just cut the other tray because the other tray is already separated and everything will be nice and easy. Well, stupid me, I look at the other tray and obviously you can see the differences there. One is way deeper cut than the other one. So you can see the electron holes are these smaller holes right there. That's a huge significant difference in where those things are gonna sit. So, <sighs> ultimately this has been a very frustrating experience. The engine uh, has been a real challenge, but this tail wheel is stressing me out quite a bit. But it's nice to know that we have this new board, which is gonna be helpful. It just means we're starting over again. Now, of course, I could just edit all this out and uh, just pretend we're starting fresh, but what kind of fun would that be? So we're starting over with the tail wheel and we are gonna put our spacers back in the way they're supposed to be 
or the way they were original. I'm assuming that's the way they're supposed to be. And we'll get this reinstalled. Okay, so we're back to square one there and we'll get our arm installed and go from there. All right, so back to the original way of doing things and uh, let's get this mounted to the new plate. All right, so very different position on this guy. I mean, previously we had that, uh, the electron retract unit way up further. So this kind of changes everything. I don't actually know if we're gonna have room for batteries back here with this setup, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, anyways, this works good. The downside now is these doors, there's absolutely no way the stock doors will work. Uh, these, these tabs here come way too far out. Uh, the, the wheel or the, the whole assembly can't even go in and out. Uh, just interferes with everything there. So uh, what we will need to do is uh, probably sand these guys down and just uh, shorten the amount that we're actually using here. So we're still gonna try and use the, uh, the piano wire setup, but we need to knock these guys down to about that wide uh, so they don't interfere with the wheel. All right, so like always, we share our successes and our failures here at the lighter side of RC. The past six hours of working on this door has been a failure, but that failure leads to success. The doors finally work. So I'll show you the ins and outs here shortly, but uh, very happy that we got it working. Oh my gosh. What? A pain. So you can see there our wire. Now the only thing with the wire is we need to hook up a, an elastic band or something that keeps it in this position. Because if the wire goes forward like that, uh, what happens is the wheel won't grab it. Uh, so we just need something, uh, just a string or something. It doesn't really matter actually. It doesn't need to be a rubber band, but a string to hold it in this position vertical. Um, and that's only when the doors are open like that. So anyways, very simple setup. We put some wheel collars here as well too, over top of the ends. Haven't done any Loctite or anything with that because this needs to be removable in order to get the tail section out. So we still have to do our rudder servo and everything, but at least at this point, we've got this stuff figured out. All right, so I think the easiest way to deal with this door setup too is when you uh, have to access this back end, just pull the doors off because the doors are just the, uh, the simple pins there. So uh, that means I can keep this all together and uh, it's gonna make that a lot easier because in order to get this out or do anything with this tray back here, you need to slide this whole thing out. So anyways, that's uh, now we're gonna pull this out and we'll start working on the rudder setup. All right, so I glued one of our little plastic uh, cable tie things down in the bottom. That's gonna give us some options when we wanna just uh, keep that, uh, the piano wire piece vertical. Again, it doesn't need to have any tension or anything on it. All it's doing is keeping it in this position. So when the plane is uh, in its normal position, it's not gonna you know, flop back and forth. It'll stay perfectly upright is the goal. So we've got our mounting point there for our rudder servo. Now, of course, our length here is important between the linkage and the actual servo. So our rods are already uh, made up or sized for the rudder. So what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread one of these ball joints on one end. And uh, when we put that into the aircraft, that'll give us an idea of whether our servo output shaft needs to go towards the front of the plane or the back of the plane. Well, and the rudder ultimately is a, is a breeze compared to the tail wheel. Everything's a breeze now. So we've got the, uh, the rudder sitting in there. Now there is uh, the wing tube sitting right underneath the back portion of the rudder where the servo arm is. So I've put two washers underneath there, but uh, the problem is that we need to build that up a little bit more. So probably three or four washers is gonna be required. Right now, if I screw that servo down, it's actually gonna be pushing on the elevator, uh, the main carbon tube here. So we don't wanna be doing that. Uh, put the clevises on this side, shrink tube over the entire system left the, uh, the shrink tube kind of loose on this side. We're gonna screw the double ball joints into this side. Uh, quite straightforward for the rudder setup. All right, so rudder's all hooked up and done. Uh, they're asking for two inches of movement on the rudder and we definitely have that. Here's a shot from the back. So that will be perfect. We got lots of rudder action on this guy, which is great. 
So the rudder really wasn't that difficult. Have to do some extra sanding here on the, uh, on the fuselage just to allow clearance for the arms, but I think that was pretty typical. Uh, there was, there's no possible way to keep the standard cutout and, uh, and have that work. So anyways, there's a shot again of the inside. So next thing we're gonna move on to is we've got a rubber, rudder cable coming to about here. Now we need to feed our uh, elevator cables and get that connector sorted out. Uh, for the elevators and then those cables can all be extended and run forward. Now we're going to be putting our electronics um, I think I'm going to build a tray on the uh, the bottom side here is going to be the plan. Um, I believe that's the plan so I'm going to build a, a tray underneath here and that's where all of our electronics are going to go so uh, we're basically going to run the uh, the lines to uh, to this area is the is the goal so. All right, so as a final step here, we're just getting all of our wiring hooked up. Now, I think what I'm gonna do for the tail servo is the tail servo line is up here. I'm just gonna probably glue a plug-in, uh, maybe right here, I'm thinking. Let me take a look at that. But we obviously wanna make sure that the tail wheel's removable, easy to remove. So I gotta figure out where we're gonna put the plug for that. Now I've done up my servo leads here. So we've got our two servo leads for the elevators. We've got the one servo lead for the rudder servo. And I've done up my labels on my heat shrink label maker. And we are going to do our other ends of our servos as well and uh, get these guys fastened. All right, so we've got our ends switched out here to the ash lock ends and this is going to work awesome. So the receptacle portion is fit into the tail. Uh, this piece here, which because the aircraft is upside down, we don't have good access, but our locking mechanism is right there and everything fits together very nicely. All right, so we've got our wiring all run forward here as much as we can do. So it's time to put the wing on this aircraft and see how she sits and looks. So we've got the aircraft upside down. We've got a couple weights in there that we can take out through the, uh, the top hatch here but we're going to put the wing on the aircraft. Now the CARF wing, fairly straightforward. You would pull the wing out of the uh, wing bags. You put a single bolt through the base of the wings. Obviously the wing tube's installed. And now that creates one uh, solid wing. There's a little bit of movement there between the two wings, but then you've got two bolts here that go into the front part of the wing, leading edge part of the wing into the fuselage, and then two massive ones here that bolt the whole wing to the aircraft. So let's get this wing installed on the fuselage and see what she looks like. All right, so we're putting the Strega on its wheels for the first time. The tail wheel's not installed, so Katie's gonna hold the tail wheel up. We're gonna spin this guy around. Oh yeah. How cool is that? <laughs> 